Hi, I'm Sibin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Flow Rate Limiter, an answer to analog electronics riddle. I've quoted the riddle that looks like that. We have here a circuit. There are two operational amplifier. There is a diode here, it looks like a clamp. And the question was, what is the purpose of the circuit and how does it work? And then what is the function of the diode bridge? This diode bridge here. So I'm going to start by actually analyzing the circuit without just giving the answer what it is and what it's doing and see we, whether we can arrive at a conclusion what is the purpose of this uh, circuit. So I'm starting off by assuming that there is a disconnection here and that there is a short here so that there are no 10 megahertz resistors here, okay? Well, if you look at it, this is a follower. This is a non-inverting amplifier, just like that. It's a buffer. So basically we have a gain of one between in and this point, and then we have a low pass filter. So this is basically a low pass filter, and we can calculate the break point which is uh, this 100 ohm and one microfarad, which is 1.6 kilohertz. So without these resistors, it is just basically a buffer with a breakpoint, a low pass of 1.6 kilohertz. So let's now introduce these two resistors, okay? Now for DC, or oh, very, very low signal, then Again, the voltage here is actually fed back to this negative terminal. The voltage between these is about zero at steady state. So it is again a buffer. So for this case, again, we are going to have a low pass filter, no matter these resistors, because the feedback is being taken he from here. And then we have the same situation. However, there are some questions, what happens when the amplitude is increasing? Also, there are some questions of uh, offset due to the large resistors and currents that might be leakage current, and then the question of stability. So we're going to talk about it later on, but basically we see that at DC, or very, very low frequency signal, small signal, this is again a buffer with a low pass of 1.6 kilohertz. Now, what happens when we increase the signal? So I'm going to introduce the concept of slow rate. What is slow rate? Now suppose we have to develop a voltage here, a certain voltage, and obviously we have a rate of rise of the voltage at this point. Now this is a capacitor. So we need a current to sustain this dv dt, and the current is depending on the capacitor. So if I have a certain rise, a rate of rise, I need a certain current. And here comes the problem. We have a very large resistor. The current is coming from here. Now the best we can do is to have this amplifier at saturation, either plus or minus. So it is sort of clamping and limiting the amount of current, the amplitude of current that we can feed here, and therefore there be a limitation to the rise or the slow rate of this signal here. So here it is in a more expanded view here. What I'm showing is the following. Suppose I have a square wave input here. Now the rise time is very fast and the fall time is very fast. Now, to sustain this rise time, I need a high current, but there is a limit. This is this resistor. So I will not be able to bring up this voltage very fast, and what will happen is I'm going to see here a certain limitation of the slow rate. The same thing will happen at the end of the pulse. Again, we need a fast fall time. That is, we have to quickly discharge the capacitor we need a high current for that, which we don't have because this current is coming through these resistors, and therefore we're going to have a very slow drop, okay? So we see that with this square wave input, we're going to have a limited slow rate at the right and full time. Now what happens with the sinusoidal waveform? Again, we have a slow rate that we have to sustain 
the highest rate of rise of a sinusoidal waveform is around 0 and 180 degree and we take the derivative for the slope that is the slow rate and we see that it is equal to the omega 2 pi f times the amplitude so for a given frequency we are limited with an amplitude or if we wish to pass a certain amplitude will be limited with the frequency okay so what will happen at the output if the amplitude is high or the frequency is high then this is expected to be at the output but we cannot sustain it because of the limited slow rate so the output here will start rising at the maximum slow rate and then it will hit this point and it will have to change its direction going down the same slow, slow rate and so on and so forth now the maximum voltage we can have here the saturation of this amplifier this particular amplifier is a rail to rail amplifier both at the input and output so therefore we have here a voltage which is plus minus 15 volt if there are no other problems like uh, dc offset which i'm going to talk about and then we have here a clamp so this clamp actually this is a clamp to this voltage this is 6.2 volt diode so adding it to say 0.5 we have about 7 volt so the maximum voltage we have here is plus minus 7 volt and therefore the maximum current that we can develop here will be 7 volt divided by about 10 mega ohm okay so let's do some calculation here so we have seen that for a very small signal the bandwidth is 1.6 kilohertz but since slow rate is 2 pi f a that is the amplitude the amplitude is the slow rate over 2 pi f now suppose I'm, I need a 7 volt in the output okay that's what I need in this case I can calculate what is the maximum frequency that I can sustain because the higher the frequency the higher the slow rate and then I'm going to have okay now the slow rate is the current over this capacitor in our case it's 7 volt over 10 mega and I find that for 7 volt output if I wish a 7 volt output the maximum frequency that I can sustain is, is only 16 millihertz very slow okay now if it's okay to get just 1 volt then I get a frequency which is 7 times higher because there is a product here and therefore I'm going to get for 1 volt 0.16 hertz so what would be the application of such a narrow bandwidth so apparently this would be for medical use for EEG or ECG that is these are signals have a very low frequency and apparently this circuit was designed for this purpose we'll see it later on but what is the purpose of this circuit I mean just limiting the slow rate is not a objective okay well it turns out the objective here is to eliminate or filter out spikes okay now if I have a signal say sinusoidal signal and there is a very fast spike here very high very sharp here then obviously the output cannot sustain it because they, we need very high current to get such a spike at the output okay so what I'm going to see at the output that this is actually being suppressed now since this is suppressed and this is what is fed here to the negative terminal then obviously the amplifier will be locked at saturation and then as we have the fall time it will lock to the other side saturation so this circuit is actually filtering out spike so this is apparently the purpose of this circuit to clean up the signal a very low frequency signal from spikes and indeed if we look at the origin of this circuit and the origin is this patent this is a 1991 patent and the title is method of improving the quality of an electrocardiogram obtained from a patient undergoing magnetic resonant imaging aha uh -huh. this means 
that the purpose here is the following. Suppose you need a ECG of a person while being inside an MRI cavity. Now the MRI is producing very sharp magnetic pulses and this is the way it works. So if you have this ECG probes connected to the patient, obviously you'll get very high spikes in the signal. So the purpose of this organ is not just to slow down the through rate, but to filter out the spike. This is the objective here. Now the values that I've taken for the circuit are from this book, and this is the design and development of medical electronics instrumentation. And here you see the circuit. This is exactly the circuit that I've put on LT spice, the two amplifier. And these are the value, the exact value that I have here, also the same amplifier. So this is the circuit for actually filtering out spikes while the bandwidth useful bandwidth due to the slow rate is very narrow. So why do we need this clamp? Now we have a clamp here already. Well it turns out that, that there are reasons for that and that is that if this clamping here at the amplifier is not symmetrical, this could be due to the fact that the amplifier is not symmetrical, that it's not a rail to rail output, which is not this case because this amplifier is in fact like a rail to rail output, but due to offset, I'll talk about it in a minute, it could be non-symmetrical. And then you have here like an average voltage, which will penetrate into the signal here and sort of modulate this signal here. So you'd like to have a symmetrical clamping, and this is the purpose of this clamping here. Otherwise, you really don't need it because you have a clamping here. But fearing that this will not be symmetrical, they've put here this symmetrical clamp to eliminate this possible problem of this uh, modulation that I've said. And in fact, this is explained in the patent. So let's have a look at some issues of this circuit. First of all, we have the problem of bias current, okay? There is a bias current to the input, and this bias current is is actually passing through these large resistors. There is a voltage drop here, but they have chosen this JFET amplifier, which is only five nanoamp bias current. So even with 20 mega ohm, it's only 100 millivolt, which is not too bad. So the output at zero will be about 100 millivolt offset without a signal, okay? So this also contributes to the asymmetry here already. And then we have another current that will be passing here, even without this uh, diode actually operating, there is a reverse current of these diodes. And this reverse current could be for this particular diode up to 20 nanoamp. So this brings it to 0.2 volt, which is also not too bad. And still it's causing some offset, of course. And then we have also a current that will be passing here through the Zener before actually the breakdown of the Zener because the Zener is passing current even before the nominal Zener voltage, okay? So even at one or two volt, there is some current here. I couldn't find this information for this particular diode. This is a very old diode. I couldn't find the information. What is the current at low voltages that is below the breakdown voltage? So this, again, will contribute to some offset in this case. Now I'm coming to the issue of uh, this clamp. Now the clamp was chosen to be seven volt. Now we have here plus minus 15 volt. So without the clamp, the voltage here will be 7.5. So this is just too close. This is a bad choice. This clamping voltage should be lower than that because some asymmetry here actually will cause this voltage to be below seven volt. So either we change the zener down voltage or we move the tapping here to a higher voltage and then of course the clamp will be operational. So this is a sort of a very marginal design. I don't know who designed it, but this is really. And now I'm coming to the question of stability and bandwidth and again, possible oscillation. Now the circuit looks like that. 
this is what we have. RS is these resistor. I'm forgetting about the clamp here. I'm talking about small signal. This is the RS. And then we are taking the feedback from here and obviously there is a phase shift. Now, suppose RC will be very small, then we'll have another 90 degree plus the 90 degree usually you have with the amplifier, so this will be an unstable system, okay? So this RC is helping to stabilize the system. So how good is it with 100 ohm and one microfarad? Now we can analyze this circuit as a feedback system, we have the amplifier, and then this we have this network here, this, this network here, so this is the loop gain here, and then using the concept of 1 over beta, and you are welcome to look up my YouTube channel, there are a number of videos talking about this method of feedback analysis or control design, and then what you do, you have the transfer function of the control, and then you plot it as one over, this is one over this, and then you look at the intersection point, and as explained in the video that I've mentioned, I'm not going to repeat it because this is outside the scope of this uh, presentation, this will be an unstable condition, and this will be a stable condition. So to quickly see what is really happening in this particular case, we can just run a LT spice in this case, analysis, small signal analysis, and looking for the loop gain. This can be done by inserting here an AC source, and again, as explained in some of my videos, the loop gain is, will be then the ratio between the voltage here and the voltage here, while you are running a small signal AC analysis over a certain range of frequencies, okay? So this is very easy to do if you have the models of the amplifier, you just set up this circuit, and here is what we are getting. This is the gain, and this is the phase, and we are interested, of course, when the gain reaches zero dB, and then we see that the phase here is very close to zero, which is like 180 degree again, which means that we have a very, very small phase margin. So again, this design is very marginal. And indeed, if I look at the output of the amplifier while this thing is running, I see these oscillations, which imply that the phase margin is indeed very small. So to remedy this, I can increase the resistor. This will lower the phase shift. And in, and in this case, as you can see, I get a very nice clean signal at the output of the amplifier when it is moving from one clamping point to the second clamping point. By the way, this is when the signal is superimposed on a sinusoidal waveform. So we see here part of the signal and this is the clamping superimposed on this signal. And now it's time to see how well does this work, okay? So I have here an input signal, this is the signal, and then I have the combined signal with noise. The noise here is very high, like 10 volt, okay? And this is the output of the amplifier, which we have seen just a second before, this is it, which is clamping here whenever we have this pulse, the rise and fall time. And look here, this is the output, amazing. This is the corrupted signal. And this is what you get at the output. The noise is very, very, very low. This is amazing. I think this is a fantastic circuit, okay? It just so filtered out this huge signal here from the waveform. Now, what about the magnitude of the signal that you can actually pass due to the limited flow rate? Well, here is the case that I'm passing an input signal of 0.7 volt frequency of 0.16 hertz. So I'm just a little bit below the one volt and you see that we are already starting to clamp. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.